we, <laughs> we're in the garage just trying to figure out what exactly we have back from Andy and, and make sure that we stain and of course end up painting the right sides. So we're having a look. By the way, Chuck, this looks awesome. Totally, totally yeah. awesome. This color is just going to be beautiful. Let's see how it looks when we get the other stuff on it. And these are uh, pieces to the head locker. And this is, of course, the uh, cover for the chain locker and the v -berk. Ah, that's so pretty. We widened the hole a little bit so we can have more access. So Chuck's, uh, we're digging around, figuring out what we have back. Um, what did you get done today? Oh, I got all these stained and uh, this piece painted and I also rearranged the workshop to give us more room. Give us more room. We've got an extra table here to work on. Yeah, well we got the remains of that sheet yeah. of plywood and a couple of saw horses. So we have another table to work on now. And I uh, did. An, I sanded down another ten strips today for the cedar ceiling, mm -hmm. and that brings us to thirty-five that we have ready to be. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking we may need to do the V-berth too with those. Yep. We may need to redo at least one side of the V-berth because we're if we're going to do one side, we may as well do both sides. Well, we're changing the lockers, yeah. so I mean, if we open that up, we're going to need to either at least. <laughs> Uh, what whatever. did I say? Yeah. <laughs> Let's you know. just plan on doing it. Okay. So the good yeah. news is we still have plenty of cedar strips available. We've got. Yeah. Uh, I. And I. Well, I ordered. Uh, we've gone through one bundle. I ordered 64, and the guy called me and said, yeah, "I got a bunch of extra. I'll just throw them in." So we wound up with 80. 80. Yeah. Uh, 80 eight foot, two inch wide by three quarter inch thick, or three eighths of an inch thick. Uh, cedar strips for the ceiling. Yeah. Ooh, and there's some pretty ones in there. Yeah. Oh, there's some gorgeous pieces. Right. Yeah. Well, apparently we got some good, uh, some good, good wood. Yeah. I haven't seen the um, the sapelli lumber that we had yet. Oh, well, grab some of the stuff. I've oh. got some pieces with me in the back of the truck that came back. That uh, Andy did some stock pieces. So hold on, Chuck will be right back. There we go. down here. Ah, uh, yes. We might have to uh, nice. stain that. It's got some really nice grain to it. Excellent. Ah, uh, this is pretty. Alright, so we're just looking at our day's haul. <laughs> yeah. So this is the Sapelli that Andy milled up today. Yeah, it's milled uh, up into sea rails and trim pieces. Yeah, it started out as, a, as what in dimension? What piece uh, did we get? I don't know. We got several different. We got um, so we got some eight quarter stock. We got some uh, four quarter stock. Yeah, four I quarter, don't. Eight quarter. We got. That's... You did the whole order. I have no idea, really. So Andy got this all milled up today and. Literally is all stock for the trim pieces and um, what else? Actually, tri yeah, mostly just trim pieces, trim pieces and rails. And, and, uh, and I see cereals. that he took the measurements off of Frank's table, so all of the railing is going to match now, which is going to be really cool. Yeah. yeah. And then this is our yellow cedar for the ceiling. Yeah. And there's some really pretty pieces in there. Yep. And then Andy also uh, stripped off these pieces, which these are, are, you want know, to explain what those are? Yeah, these are inch and a half wide strips of um, exterior plywood. And they've been fletched. In other words, they've cut through half an inch. They're three quarter ply, right? Yes, yeah, three quarter inch thick plywood. And they've been cut through half inch deep cuts so that these these strips will bend with the curvature of the hull and so these are going to be epoxy to the hull and then a, a layer of glass tape over top of them and then the strips will be screwed to these that's the plan well, it worked last time. It worked last time. <laughs> it worked just fine. But we are going to put one more strip in than we had before, I think. We only had two strips up there. I think we're going to do three this time. That's what we talked about. Yeah, well, 
Whatever we talked about, honey, that's what we're going to do. <laughs> so, uh, stain a piece of the sapelli tomorrow? Yeah, just to see what it's going to look like. I mean, it, last time I remember we used the same stain. Now I'm remembering this. We used the same stain on the okumi that we used on the solid sapile. Sapelli, sapile. <laughs> Tomato, tomato. Tomato, tomato. And this is the solid sapelli that we had. This is a this is a beautiful piece. Too bad it's ruined. You can't re you reuse it. I just want to show you the um, the color of the wood. Now this this was the one we stained with uh, is 234, right? Yeah. That was uh, cherry wood stain, and the the wood the wood this wood is is uh, sapile. And so now we've stained this wood. It's a pretty close match. I'm sure that when we get the uh, varnish and stuff on it, it's going to be real close. So we'll use, I think, the same color stain. We had to come with a different stain this time from what we did before. But I think we're close. I think we're close. It's going to look really nice. I think. Let's cool. see. This piece here, this is, yeah, this is Okumi plywood. This, is, this piece is Okumi plywood and it, it has the um, Minwax Cherrywood 234 stain on it and then varnish on top of that. And this, this is uh, uh, Okumi that's been stained with Minwax 215 red oak. Red oak. Which looks pretty good. Yeah. It and sure it's is. fairly close. It's fairly close depending on what piece you're comparing it to. It's fairly close and I'm sure once we get the varnish on it's going to look great. Yep. Looking forward to it. Looking oh, forward yeah. to this being done. Oh, gosh. Me too. <laughs> <clears throat> but right we now have we're been spending blessed a with mild weather that has allowed us to get all of this done. Yeah, well, we've, we've been able to make progress. Thank you for the weather. But, uh, yeah, we just have to keep moving while, the, while, it's, while we have good weather. Yep. All right. Done for the day. Done for the day. Alright, so we're just getting ready to put on the uh, first coat of the penetrating resin. Penetrating resin. Just getting that mixed up and you said that has to rest for 15 minutes, right? That's what it says on the can. Cool. Let it All rest right. after mixing it, let it rest for 15 minutes. And then we'll come back and we'll spread it on this piece here. Which no one's gonna see what we're going to practice on. It got really cold last night. It got really cold last night. <laughs> Snowed this morning. Snowed this morning. Briefly. It was supposed to snow this afternoon briefly and then rain again later this evening. So hopefully the temperatures will come back up. All right, so wait 15 minutes and then we'll get started. I yeah. think there's a nice hot cup of coffee waiting inside for us real quick. Yeah. Sounds like a plan. Okay. Okay, so this is the first coat of penetrating epoxy. Yep. First coat of penetrating epoxy. <clears throat> and I'm going to lay it on the way I would normally lay on, um, well, not exactly. Kind of like I would do um, varnish. Actually, it's not varnish. It's a sealer, so... But still, we don't have a lot of experience with this product. What we have so far seems to be working out pretty good. And we're just going to be very, very careful with it. Even as we learn what we're doing here. So we did do, of course, our test pieces, which are sitting kind of in the junk over there. Sitting over in the pile. Yeah. yeah. But um, this is our first big piece with the penetrating epoxy and uh, all of these pieces are practice. This one won't be seen at all once we get it installed. So no, it won't be visible at all. And They'll actually we're even it. talking about painting it over <laughs> so we can have a nice white locker. But we figured this piece would be the best to really give us an idea because this is the first piece of uh, the Okomi plywood with the stain and all of this that we'll have done. Sample, uh, same plywood, but 
you know, we've well, been... you know, we're taking it slow. We did the um, we did the test pieces to see what we could expect and maybe learn a little bit. And now we're taking a piece that uh, is really not going to show, so it doesn't matter too much if we screw it up. <laughs> but we hope we get it right on this piece, and if not, that we learn what we did wrong and avoid that mistake when we move on to things that do show. Because in the end, we are planning to give every piece this treatment with the penetrating resin. Even the pieces that aren't going to sh or that are going to show the furniture pieces, they're all going to get this penetrating resin treatment and then they'll be varnished afterwards. So this is the first stage that just about all of the plywood pieces on the boat are going to get. Yeah, we've got uh, four days to play catch up with what Andy got cut for us. Uh, supposed to have some snow this afternoon and then rain again this evening, so temperatures might or might not cooperate. Uh, right around freezing. Yeah. And not, maybe not quite cold enough for the snow to stay. A little, uh, little help from the heat lamps and the heater. Yeah. Uh, we've been, what, able to maintain consistent temperature about 70 about on the table? About 70 on the table, yeah. So, got enough workspace to, to get stuff done. What I'm doing here is I'm just going to try and get a nice even coating without running it over the edge. This stuff has a very long pot life. This batch that... will last through two coats. Yeah, you. Uh, this batch will definitely last through two coats. So. Left it in, and the last time, and it lasted for what? Two days. Oh, it was still it was still liquid enough to spread for, for two weeks. Really? Holy. I God. left it sitting on the windowsill there, and the temperatures were in the low 30s the whole time. So, yeah, huh. the stuff has has in the pot covered with a lid. It'll last quite a while. But at the same time, it'll cure to the touch in eight hours when it's spread out thin like this and kept at 70 degrees. But the one thing that won't last is the brushes. Right? That stuff in the pot will last a couple of weeks. The brush will last like this a few hours. I suppose I could, I could put it in a baggie. I bet that would do it. Yeah, stick it in a baggie. Let's try that. We'll get a sandwich bag and put that brush try to save it. I mean... Well, they're cheap throwaway brushes, but but they're still, you know, like. Well, we'll we'll have an idea if it works or not, won't we? A buck twenty-nine. <laughs> Every time we throw away a, a brush, we throw away a couple of bucks. Yeah. So. And as we progress to removing things from the boat, all of the uh, foam back vinyl came out real easy on both sides. But now I've run into what appears to be a uh, previous owner's improvement here. I have black neoprene that's been glued to the hull. And then there's this, I don't know, whatever that is. It was probably painted on the hull. That might be some kind of adhesive. Painted on the hull. And this stuff on top of it. Oh gosh, that's going to be a bitch getting out. <sighs> yeah. Let me sit down here for a minute. Okay. Well, we've got a lot of stuff done. Got the uh, forward cabin stripped. The main bulkhead is still in. We got the uh, the settee and the dinette completely out now, stripped down. We just have to clean the hull. In the uh, main cabin, and then we can start dismantling the galley.